Okay, so we see that this carbon is bonded to two hydrogens and one oxygen, whereas this carbon is bonded to one hydrogen and double bonded to an oxygen. And awesome, you guys, we get to use rule number three here, which says to treat a double bond as if it were two single bonds. So really, we treat this carbon as if it were bonded to one hydrogen and two oxygens. So mentally, if you want to visualize this, you can draw this out like this. A carbon single bonded to two oxygens. So hey, you can draw this out like this if you want to, but just realize that it's not actually like that. We just treat it this way for the purposes of prioritizing the substituents. So if we compare these two substituents now, you'll see that this carbon's neighbors are higher in priority than this carbon's neighbors. And don't be afraid to write this out if you don't want to do it all in your head. Okay, so what I mean is, this carbon is connected to an oxygen, another oxygen, and a hydrogen as its neighbors. And this is versus this carbon, which has a hydrogen, a hydrogen, and an oxygen as its neighbors. And if you compare each of these sets of atoms, you see that they both have at least one oxygen. So you can go ahead and cancel those out because they're the same in that respect. So cancel this one with this one. You can also see that they both have at least one hydrogen here and here. So you can go ahead and cancel those out because they're also the same in that respect. But hey, when you compare the last set of atoms, you see that this carbon had an oxygen as its neighbor, whereas this carbon had a hydrogen as its neighbor. And oxygen is higher in atomic number than hydrogen, making this substituent higher in priority. So this substituent up here is going to get priority number two, and by default, this substituent over here is going to get priority number three. Let's fill that in. Number two and number three. Okay, so we've assigned priorities to these substituents. Now all we have to do is to determine whether these substituents are arranged in a clockwise or counterclockwise arrangement. And I told you to make sure that the lowest priority group is facing the back. And is it in this case? No, it's not. The lowest priority group, the hydrogen, is actually pointing to the front, as is indicated by this solid wedge. And we wrote up here that if the lowest group is in the front, then what you're going to do is determine the configuration and then just flip it. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. And we see that the substituents go from 1 to 2 to 3 in a clockwise direction, so it looks like it should be R. But, since the lowest group, the hydrogen, is facing the front, we flip that configuration to S. Okay, so we would say that this compound has S stereochemistry. Okay, so let me say that one more time. These substituents go from 1 to 2 to 3 in a clockwise direction, which makes it look like it should be R configuration, but since the lowest priority group, the hydrogen, was facing the front, then we flip our decision from R to S. We flip the configuration from R to S. Okay, so this was a great example of how a lowest priority group was facing the front, and so we had to determine the configuration and then flip it. So let's go ahead and check that rule off. Okay, so this example also illustrated how to treat a double bond as if it were two single bonds. Like we saw here, this carbon was double bonded to one oxygen, but we treated it as if it was single bonded to two oxygens. Okay, so let's go ahead and check that rule off. Okay, so we've now seen examples where the lowest priority group was facing the back and also facing the front. Now let's look at the last type of situation you can have, and that's when the lowest priority group is facing the side.
Okay, so again, your professor is going to ask you, assign stereochemistry to this compound, see whether it's the R or S enantiomer, right? And so first things first, you guys, is this compound even chiral? Yeah, it is. It's got four different substituents, okay? So, hey, let's just go ahead and assign priorities to those substituents. And hey, this time there is no hydrogen substituent. So you actually have to look a little harder to see which one is the lowest priority. It's not a dead giveaway this time. But hey, no big deal. We just follow our priority rules, right? And so you know, the lowest priority group isn't the oxygen, isn't the chlorine. It's got to be one of these lower atomic number carbon substituents, right? And we see that this carbon is connected to three hydrogens, whereas this carbon is connected to two hydrogens and one carbon. So this methyl group is going to get the lower priority. So let me give that guy priority number four, meaning that this guy is going to get the next lowest priority, priority number three. And between the oxygen and the chlorine, chlorine has a higher atomic number, so chlorine is going to get priority number one, and oxygen is going to get priority number two. Okay, so we've assigned priorities. Now we just need to determine the configuration. And hey, is the lowest priority group, the CH3, pointing back? No, right? Is it pointing forward? No, it isn't. It's on the side this time. So we have to approach this a little differently from the other two examples we did. We actually have to kind of visualize how these atoms are arranged in space. And for some people, this is no problem. They can see it right away. But for the rest of us, there are two methods that can help you visualize what's going on. The model method and the flower bouquet method. And I'll show you both. But let's do it with models first because it will help you visualize the flower bouquet method when you see it later. 